Check that. Hi, I'm the wife. <laughs> and I have a gadget, and I have no idea where to point it or how to use it, <laughs> because I've got some photographs to show you. Uh, my name is Jonina, and uh, I'm very happy to be married to Johanna, and uh, our relationship started on th almost 30 years ago, and was a bit unusual. I'm going to tell you the story of our relationship, uh, which I have also put in a book, which was published just before Christmas in Iceland. Um, it's called With Johanna, which means Johanna and I. And I deliberately used that title because, as she told you, for a very long time, uh, I wasn't allowed, or I wasn't allowed, I just couldn't talk about her, like coming back to the office on a Monday if we had done something, gone to see a film or whatever over the weekend. This was a phrase that I, I couldn't use for a very long time, saying, Johanna and I did this or that, or went to see this. So that's the title of the book, and now that, wow, it's already, it's already there. <laughs> With Johanna, which means Johanna and I. And I, just to clarify, this is not my first book. I'm a novelist, and I've also written, written some books uh, which are non-fiction. And one of my books is a, um, well, it's a trilogy, so it's three books. I have written quite a lot for young adults, uh, and I did a, a trilogy about a young Icelandic girl who comes out, and in the beginning of the first book, she has a boyfriend, and she has a girlfriend at the end of the book three. <laughs> <laughs> so things take time, even in Iceland. But, <laughs> um, but the story of uh, Johanna and myself is not just our story, because it's also the story of Icelandic society, which changed an enormous amount from the time we met. And I'm just going to tell you, I'm just taking off my watch to make sure I don't speak for too long. And uh, we met in 1983, really. Uh, I sort of, Johan has been in politics forever, since 1978. And I went, uh, for a very brief while, I went into politics by mistake, but it was a wonderful <laughs> mistake. I, it, it all happened very strangely. It's too long a story to tell you here. But uh, it meant that I met Johanna, and I would never ever have met her otherwise. So I can't regret it, although politics is not my field. And I was quick to get out. Um, so uh, the beginning is 1983, the beginning of our story and the beginning of telling you about Iceland. There was no law for gay people in Iceland at the time, no law to, uh, to take care of any human rights, of course no marriage, of course no uh, adoption law or anything. And also we are a very small society, we are only about 320,000 people now, we were fewer all these decades ago. And uh, I think most people, maybe even myself, thought there were no gay people in Iceland. It's just, you know, there was nobody out, and the few people who were out, they quickly moved away to Copenhagen or somewhere else <laughs> to escape. So there was nobody in your family, and now I'm talking both about myself and Johanna, and also about people in general in Iceland. There was nobody in your family, nobody at work, and nobody in your circle of friends. People simply didn't know anyone who was not heterosexual. Of course, they were there, they were just invisible. And I'm going to try and show you a photo. Boing. Okay. This is a committee. As you can see, it's all women. And of course, as is appropriate, Johanna is sitting in the middle, in the front row. And this is a committee that she started. And I was lucky enough that during my very brief visit in politics, uh, she started this committee. And it, is, it was compiled of 
people, women from all political parties and from the workforce, from the, from the uh, uh, women's uh, labor companies, you know, where teachers and nurses and where women were a majority. And I am hiding there in the back row uh, at the, to the left, number three, and I look as if I'm extremely dark skinned. I had been it, taking sessions in uh, sunbathing, you know, salons. <laughs> so I, I was not as pale as I am now. And this is 1983, and the committee is being started by Johanna, and the committee is to uh, work towards equal pay for women. And uh, so we started seeing each other at these committee meetings. And Johanna did not register me on the radar. She was very committed to equal pay and working towards this. And, and we were both married. We were actually both married to men, and we both had children. I had a, a, a little boy who was born in 81, and Johanna had two young sons. And we were just working. We just met there, and something happened to me. And I just started having these feelings and I didn't know what feelings there were. There was just something drawing me, taking, you know, making me long for and counting the minutes to the next committee meeting. <laughs> Very strange. And I had never ever, and Johanna, Johanna neither, we had never been in a relationship with a person of the same sex. We had never even imagined that this was something that would happen to us, loving somebody uh, who was also a woman. So we would just, you know, this took us very much by surprise. And we are not even at the, at the beginning of our relationship yet. Uh, I just started, wanted to go to these meetings. And this was around my 30th birthday. And my family wanted to give me one of those um, kitchen appliances, KitchenAid, you know, for making, cook, uh, making cakes and, and stuff. And I asked them to give me a, a briefcase because I was such a committee person <laughs> by that time. <laughs> so... My family gave me a red, bright red uh, suitcase, a uh, briefcase to take to my meetings. And I just went to these meetings and I was staring at Johanna and wondering what on earth is going on with me. And this can't be, well, you know, this, this must be some mistake. And, <laughs> and at the time, uh, I, I simply didn't know what was happening with me. And then I was lucky. We had uh, some meetings all around Iceland. And the two, always two committee members going together. And uh, somebody else was going with Johanna. I was not going with her. But uh, I managed to, uh, when the woman who was going with Johanna, she had to bail out, I said, I'll, I'll do it, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, then I got really scared when the, when the day got closer. And then I went out to the shop and I bought a bottle of sherry. <laughs> <laughs> very, very tame to have some courage. So we stayed overnight at the hotel and uh, I'm, I plucked up courage along with drinking some sherry and told her that I thought perhaps maybe, but definitely not, had some feelings for her. It was all very confused. And she just say, sat there and listened and she was very nice and polite and she didn't throw me out of the room or, or do anything, uh, but she, she, you know, just listened to me. And then gradually we started sort of seeing each other, and it took a long time, it took many months. Now I'll see you the next photo. You can see maybe Johanna with white hair in the middle. I'm just to her right, still brown from the sunbeds. <laughs> And this is after a very interesting uh, meeting of women in Iceland. There have been some uh, strikes. This, the first women's strike in Iceland was in 1975. And this was to commemorate it 10 years later. So this is 1985. And that's when our uh, relationship finally was starting. Because when I plucked up courage, it was already 1985. So I had been watching her and pining for a long time. And we were gradually, this is October 85, and we were sort of beginning to see each other, but it was still uh, very much a secret. 
And I'll jump to the next one. This is us, uh, Johanna to the far left, and then me, and then some two other ladies from the Johanna's political party. And this is very typical for how our life was for the next many, many years. We were uh, socializing as friends, and we nobody knew about our relationship. We had a very turbulent time in the closet from 1985 until 2000, when we started living together. Uh, friends and family gradually found out. My friends found out because I was joking about it before anything happened, saying, guess what, I think I might, you know, don't be alarmed. And, you know, they, so they immediately clicked when I started seeing Johanna and we divorced. Uh, I divorced immediately, asked my husband for a divorce in uh, June 1985, and a few months later, Johanna divorced her husband. So family and friends, they had found out gradually, and we had got no negative reaction, it must be said. But there was not much understanding or support either, it must be said, too. There was a gossip, because we live in a, a small society. People started gossiping about our relationship very early in 1986. We thought we could maybe get away with being friends and considered friends for a few years before people started adding things up, but no such luck. So we, we, there were a lot of uh, stories going around, but us, we had separate homes and we, we didn't live together. People couldn't, and the papers never wrote about it. Um, and it sort of confused people that we didn't live together. And at the same time that we started our relationship, we, got, uh, we were given a book. Uh, it's a book about a Norwegian MP who, it was published around about the time, this in 1980-something. Uh, this MP came out, uh, she met uh, a woman who was interviewing her, a journalist, and they fell in love more or less on the same night. And, you know, it was a big romance and she came out and uh, when she wrote her book, which we read, everything was going okay, but very soon she lost her seat in parliament and uh, she, it, it cost her her career. So I, I must say that it didn't encourage us to be very open about our relationship because Norway is a Nordic country like us, very open, progressive, and what happened there could easily have happened in Iceland. And just a very short story to tell you how my mother reacted to the news of our relationship. She, was, uh, she died now in January, and at the time when she found out, uh, she, she, she was living in the same house with me, but people turned to, you know, they, they turned a blind eye. And Johanna came and stayed with me during the weekend with her son, a younger son, or I went, took my son and all his playthings and stayed with Johanna for the, for the weekend. So my parents, living in the same house, obviously realized that we were spending a lot of time together. And finally, we never, neither of us said anything. Finally, my mother asked me, you know, this thing with Johanna, weekends, that kind of thing, are, is this a romantic relationship? And when I said yes, um, she sort of sighed, and she, is the, she was the most teetotal person in the whole of Iceland. She absolutely hated anything to do with alcohol. And she just sighed and said, oh, your father and me, we were just hoping you were drinking together. <laughs> so even that would have been better. This photo is from 2002. Um, as we've been saying, in 2000 we started living together. This is when we had our civil partnership. And we had this photo taken. Uh, it was a very private thing. We just had a judge come home to our home. And there was just uh, my sister and Johannes' son who were there. And uh, it was very private. And then um, all these years later, when the law changed, then we changed it to marriage. And we were so ridiculously busy or, or, or just not very with it. We didn't take any photo when we got married. <laughs> so this is the only wedding photo that we have got. <laughs> very stupid. Um, 
But by the time that we got married, Johanna was prime minister and she had a lot of other things to think about. <laughs> That's our excuse. Uh, we sat ho at home together. Uh, our sons had all left home. There was no media frenzy. Uh, there was the, the Icelandic media asked for interviews, but we just said no, and they said okay then. So <laughs> <laughs> we were really, really lucky. But there was um, people did try to use Johanna's sexuality against her in politics, but the media sort of didn't want to play along, and uh, everything just went fine. And we finally had what we had longed for. We had privacy, we had uh, peace and respect, and we were living our cozy little life, finally having waited from 1985 for all these years to just have a peaceful little ordinary life like everybody else. And then Iceland went into economic uh, chaos, and the banks collapsed, and we were almost bankrupt as a society, and Johanna became prime minister. And that changed everything. Uh, so our life after that was completely different because uh, when for the very few days that people were sort of getting used to the idea that Johanna would probably become prime minister, the media in Iceland did not bat an eyelid. It wasn't an issue at all. So nobody thought, you know, it would be a first something or interesting. And then the foreign media found out, and then the Icelandic media also thought it was, you know, something to write about. So no more privacy. It was all a very different life. And Johanna had a huge task because uh, she was the only uh, politician that people in Iceland trusted to deal with it because she had a reputation for being very hardworking, very honest, and uh, they wanted her to, to make sure that Iceland would not go over the brink. So she was working. <laughs> I know it's a cliche to talk about 24-7, but she was really working 24-7. And uh, she had no private life, and she just left home very early in the morning, sometimes even before I was awake, and she sometimes came home after I was asleep. So it was a very special time, a very, very difficult time. But, uh, and we didn't socialize much. There was no time for any, you know, going abroad on official visits much. We did a little bit of that in the end. But uh, we did every year the Nordic prime ministers, they meet up with their spouses. And uh, this is in 2009. I'm uh, the one on the far left, in case you don't recognize me. And then it's uh, the wife or the spouse of the, of the prime minister in Finland, then the prime minister in Norway, prime minister in Sweden, prime minister in Denmark. And this is taken in Iceland. This, they came on the visit. They, they alternate between the Nordic countries for these meetings. And I must say that for the few social sort of engagements in both in Iceland and abroad that we took part in when Johanna wasn't working, our sexuality or the fact that we were same-sex couple just was never an issue. People might have talked about it behind our backs, but we never heard of it. And everybody was extremely polite, and we never had any, any problems. And this is a typical home moment. This is a Christmas photo. I think it's from 2010. These are the six grandchildren that had been born by then. And Johanna always plays Father Christmas. She puts on a, a red suit and she, she had just taken that off and, and we had a very lively photo session with the grandchildren. And we have one more child uh, was born in January this year. So now they are seven and the youngest is five months, and the oldest one is old enough to drive us now. So he is 18. And the youngest grandchildren, it must be said, they, they, they hardly knew their grandmother. They just saw her on television. And then it was very strange to find her you know, in, in family functions also. But they got to know her through television. Um, and I'm going to show you a photo here from the Fair Islands. We did go on two official, you know, these very, very uh, high protocol official visits. 
And the first one was in September 2010 to the Faroe Islands. And that's the Prime Minister and his wife in the Faroe Islands. And everything went smoothly. And they are our cousins in the North Atlantic. And we uh, didn't expect anything to happen particularly. And then uh, uh, an MP who is very orthodox and right wing, and he refused to come to the official banquet to dine with us. And the reason was that he said, said Johanna was flaunting her sexuality by having me along. And he would have come if I had been left at home. So I, I think that's a bit strange. You know, it's not the fact that she is married to someone of the same sex, but because the, the partner is along. In the, so we had, we had a lovely visit in the Fair Islands. It's a beautiful place and wonderful people. And uh, after our visit, there was a lot of talk about uh, gay issues in the Fair Islands. And when we were there, there was no gay association or anything. They, uh, a few months later, they um, started a gay and lesbian LGBT association in the Fair Islands. And they say... <laughs> And they are now preparing for their third gay pride parade in the Faroe Islands. And, and they, they claim, I don't know what you're going to say here in Toronto, but they claim that they have the largest gay pride parade per capita. <laughs> um, just a quick... This is, you may know this person on the far left, this is Santi Toxwick, the UK and Danish uh, TV personality and writer and comic. She came to visit us, not in connection with Johanna, believe it or not. She came because uh, I'm the co-founder of an Icelandic Women's Literary Prize and Santi Toxwick came to give a speech when we were deliver, uh, giving that. It, this is something that's been going on for eight years. Uh, this Women's Literary Prize to sort of boost women writers in Iceland because uh, we needed, uh, not that we wrote worse books, but you know, it's like a man's society a little bit. They, they publish each other's books and they get the most advertising space, etc. Okay, I keep looking at the clock. And finally, uh, we have uh, some photos all taken from uh, a visit which was really remarkable. Uh, Johanna went on an official visit to China, to the Prime Minister in China, in April 2013, last year, April. It was one of the last things that she did before she retired from politics. And there we are in China with bodyguards and everything. And it's, uh, uh, it must have been a bit of a headache for the protocol people, and Johanna made a lot of people in Iceland are aware in her protocol office that she wanted me to be treated exactly the same as a, same, as a different sex spouse of a prime minister visiting officially. She made it a real issue and she, uh, they, they wouldn't have dared to do anything else. <laughs> And there she is on the red carpet with the Chinese Prime Minister. And then we are entering, this is us also on a red carpet which doesn't look very red there. Uh, we are going into the official banquet where we sat at the uh, top table obviously with the Chinese Prime Minister. This I'm sure is a unique thing because obviously there are not many same-sex Prime Minister but there may be your Ontario Prime Minister might go there. And so it was a very special occasion, very historic, and we were extremely happy to go there and to be able to show the, because it was, uh, it, they, they did talk about this in the Chinese media, there was some talk that about uh, the fact that I had been hidden away somewhere, but I wasn't really, I was interviewed by the media uh, both before and, and while I was there and afterwards, and I was, uh, I went on a spouse program to, oops, this is, yeah, this is us at the high table there at the dinner, and um, I went to visit a a university in my spouse program, it's called Beijing Foreign Studies University, 
And so and there was a huge sign when we drove up to the university, so they were not hiding me at all. There was a huge, huge sign, like the premiere of a Hollywood movie, saying they welcomed me to the university, and this is just a little sign inside. So I think it was very interesting to be in a same-sex couple coming to that place and being treated very civilly and, and whatever they might have thought when they didn't when we were not talking to us. And then finally, Johanna was leaving office uh, just over a year ago in May last year. And there was a group of women who, who from all different political parties who are in a reading group together, like a book club. And they started a Facebook thing saying, let's all go down to Johanna when she's leaving uh, office and give her a red rose and thank her for saving Iceland because she really changed Iceland's economy around and left everything fine. <laughs> and much to our surprise, 1,000 people turned up with red roses. It was amazing. <laughs> they stood outside and sang you know, songs uh, in front of her office and yelled her name until she came out and everybody was rushing to her with a thousand red roses. It was really wonderful. And the uh, board of the Gay and Lesbian Association in Iceland, LGBT Association, wanted their picture with us. So that's, <laughs> they, they were there obviously with roses of all different colors, not just red. <laughs> and that's also the, some of the roses. And this is Johanna outside the uh, Russian embassy protesting in August last year, uh, protesting the gay laws. Uh, there have been some protests there, and this uh, was one of them, and Johanna was, I was there also. And I must tell you just finally that uh, there was, uh, last year there was a PEN international conference in Iceland. PEN is the International Association of Writers all over the world, and they, um, they passed the declaration, this, this important uh, gathering of writers from all over, they passed a declaration to protest against the anti-gay laws in Russia on the whole conference, and I was there also enjoying it, taking part. We walked all of the con from a huge congregation of, of people through Reykjavik to the Russian embassy, and the ambassador came out and he was given this declaration from writers all over the world. I think that's the end of the photos and that's the end of me. Thank you very much.